Jesus was praying. And then when he finished, a disciple came to him and asked him to teach them how to pray the way John taught his disciples. And Jesus did so. He did not get jealous. He gave them exactly how to approach the Father. He described the Father and he described our petition and our behavior before the Father. Then Jesus asked, said, which one of you would go at midnight to a friend's house and say, lend me three loaves? Which one of you would do that? You asking me for bread this time of night, lend you some bread. Man, I'm so tired. You just don't know the inside of me. I'm going crazy. My children are asleep. I'm tired and you knocking. But nevertheless, let me get up and give you some bread. Oh, you want me to lend him some bread? All right. Here you go. Ah, oh, you're so welcome. You're welcome, my friend. No problem. No problem. All right. I'm sleepy. Good night. Now that friend said, lend me some bread. And the other friend, after he thought he got it, he gave it to him. But I'm telling you straight up from the beginning, ask me. And it shall be given, not long. Seek. And you're going to do what? Definitely fine. Knock. I'll be right there to open that door. Now your tuition is paid. Free room and board. And you got a question you want to ask me? Ask me. I declare it's in there. I don't care what it is. Seek me. I promise you I have already thought and put the answer in there. Get my attention by knocking. Make some noise. And that door is going to be open. The answer to life about anything in life is in this. Now, book. if your son or daughter asks you for bread, would you give him a stone? Come on now. If your child, just think about your, your child who needs you, asks you for a fish, would you give him a snake? Now, if you clearly know you've been a father, come on now, you know you wouldn't do that. Neither will God. You already know it. You already know. If your child asks you for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? Would you offer him a scorpion? If you've then been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. You do all kind of stuff, but you'll give a child something good. How much more would the Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to anybody that saw a devil and he was dumb, not able to speak? Jesus cast that devil out. The dumb, the person that couldn't speak, start talking. Stop accepting the devil's work as normal. Call him out. Some people didn't understand how Jesus did that, so they just concluded he cast out devils by the power of the chief of devils, who is Beelzebub. <laughs> Some of the people said he was controlled by the chief of devils, and others said, show us a sign, and Jesus was provoked at their response. He said, let me tell you something. I don't work for the devil. A house divided will not stand. A house divided won't stand. Lord, forgive us. We need to know your word. No team who expects to win will fight his own teammates. The devil won't last if he fight his own devils. And you say that I work for the chief of devils. Okay, I don't, but your son's cats didn't out devils. Now, who is their chief? If we both casting out devils, who are they working for? That's your children. When I use the thing of God to carry out an assignment to cast out a devil, that devil got to go. That lets me know, and you better hear me, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Let me see if we can explain what Jesus is trying to show about the enemy. The enemy says, I got somebody standing guard over my stuff so nobody can come in and take it. 
from those that serve me. Jesus said, I don't care how big your enemy is or the devil has positioned himself. When I come in, I'm stronger than everything that he has. But if you say you don't want me, he said, you're against me. There are 4,000 different known religions and all they do is have people scattered everywhere. The only way things will be kept together, it has to be kept by the word of God. Okay, this is what life is like when you don't fill up with the word of God. The devil leaves you when you say, I want to be saved. He leaves. Then he searches. Can't find nowhere to go and guess what he does. Because you wouldn't get in the word. He said, I'm going back into the house I live. We got to be filled with the word of God. When the unclean spirit came back and saw that it was empty. He said, oh, we got room for company. I'm going to get seven more. This guy going to be worse than he was the first time I was in it. <laughs> we bringing some more folk up in here. We're going to keep him down. He won't get the word, so let's just live in him. You said, bless my mama. Bless my mama because she gave birth to me and did what a mother does. He said, <laughs> yeah, right. He said, bless because you know what I said and you obey it. Find the word, keep it. Learn it and do now, it. Now, this crowd followed Jesus because they wanted him to give them a sign. Thick, close together, a whole bunch of folk. But Jesus said, no, it's not going to work like that. The only sign you're going to get is the same sign that Jonah, Jonah showed Nineveh. He was in the belly for three days, and you're going to see me in the grave, and I'm going to get up, and that's going to be your sign. When you see me get up, that's the only sign you're going to get. You remember when the queen of the south she said, I came to see Solomon, and he told me some mighty thing. But you got Jesus? He's greater than Solomon, and you don't listen to him? Oh, okay. I'm just letting you know you in trouble. And then the people of Nineveh said, no, I know y'all don't. I know y'all wrong for that. Y'all wrong. Jesus said, nobody takes a candle and hide it in a secret place. You don't put it in your suitcase, neither do you put it. On a bush. But a candle goes on a candlestick. And you put it so people can see the light. If your eye is single, that means you are focused. You're not all over the place. And what you do, you bring life and light to whatever you do and for whom you do it. He said, but if your eye is all over the place, you living in darkness and everything you do is evil. Evil eyes, evil product. Just this morning, somebody told me that they were blessed by Jeremiah 22. And I went back to read Jeremiah 22 to find out there were some things that God had put in order. But I forgot. This scripture means that once God has given you the light of instructions, carry it out. Don't forget to do what he said. Otherwise, you will be in darkness. Jesus said, give us our daily bread. Give us our assignment. Once we are clear about what God wants us to do, do it the day that he tells you to do it, and you will be full of light. A man that lived by a lot of outward rules called the Pharisees asked Jesus to come eat dinner with him. And Jesus said, okay, and started eating. And then the Pharisee looked at Jesus and said, wait a minute, hold up. You didn't wash your hand and you ate What's up with that? What? What? Jesus said, um, you, 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 you want to make sure I'm clean on the outside, but you're full of dead men bones. He said, you wash. He said, Don't you know the body got to be washed on the outside and examined on the inside? It's a whole package. He said, let me tell you now. Get it together. I tell you what you do. You give away some of this stuff that you got in this house and meet the need of others. Focus on See, that. you Pharisees, you make sure that everybody know that you pay your tithes. He said, but you don't treat people right. You're arrogant. You want the best seats. You want somebody to notice you when you walk in. And then you want people to see you and shout your name in the, in, in the mall and in the marketplace. He said, but you just like a grave there used to be. People walking on you, not realizing you under there. That's what your life means. And then one of the lawyers said, what is, 
What you who you talking to? You talking to us? That's an insult. And Jesus said, Oh yeah, let me tell you, you write laws and legalize that cause people pain. You better Your stop. fathers kill the prophets, but you be a big monuments once they are dead. You up to no good. You are up to no good. What a slap in the face. God finds a person who would teach you the word. You kill them and you set up a sepulcher to remind God that you did. Every drop of blood you pay because you ignored the words I say. Oh, hear ye, Jesus said, hear ye, hear the word of God. The lawyers knew the word of God. They knew the law of Moses. They wouldn't obey it, and they hindered or tried to stop those who were seeking the right ways of God. Remember, Jesus was a guest in the Pharisee's house. And he spoke against him and all that were like him. They didn't like it. They provoked and wanted to find enough time so they can catch him and accuse him.